Hi, I'm Austin Griffith. Happy Bowtie Friday. This is going to be the first video of a series that I'm calling ETH.Build. You can go to ETH.Build to uh, use this tooling, but it's just to kind of play around and kind of get an idea of how things work uh, when building on Ethereum. So, uh, the first module we're going to look at is a hash function. What the heck is a hash function? Well, let's check it out. So, it's kind of like a fingerprint. You have input and it can be anything. Um, for now we'll just go with the text hello world and on the other side you're gonna have an output and that output is a 64 character? Yeah it says 66 but that's because it is 0x. It's a 64 character hexadecimal string and uh, if, if you're looking at hex it kinda looks like a color and it might even be easier to um, kind of describe what we're seeing here if we just make this a color. So let me throw together uh, just a color depiction of what this is to help illustrate what the heck is going on. So what we're going to do is just grab these first six characters of whatever the string is and display it as a color. And if we look at that, we'll see that it's that 4-7 just like we wanted. And there we go. It's that nice purple color. So uh, what? let's see what color my name is. There we go, a nice, nice forest green. Cool, so uh, now let's go back to Hello World. It's that purple again. Okay, so what we just discovered here is it's, it's deterministic. Basically, whatever we put in as our input, we're always going to get the same thing out on the other side, okay? The second property here is you can put in anything of any arbitrary size. So I can just mash on a keyboard, we, we see the color changes, but, but that string stays at the, that 66 length, right? So no matter what you put in here, even a file, right? I could drop in this file of Leo, my boy, and I can put that in as a hash, and I'm going to get, ooh, ooh, that was slow, this nice orange color, right? And then I could drop in something else that I have a BIP word list text doc laying on my... There we go, and it's this nice light blue. So if I bring Leo back and I drop him in, guess what color it's gonna be? We know what color it's gonna be. It's gonna be that orange, right? So you get this deterministic fingerprint of the thing that you put in, and uh, the, the next most important property is it's one directional. So what I mean by that is, let's get this file out of here. If, if I put in uh, Hello World again, we're going to get this 4717. If we take that 4717 and we send it to someone and we say, okay, here you go. Here is the hash of my secret. If you can guess my secret, I'll give you a hundred bucks. They're going to, they're, they're not going to be able to like get close, right? So let, let's say, let's say it's 4717 and they start like poking around waiting to see if they could find a four there. I found a four by typing in hello, right? You can't, you can't just like change little characters and get close. You either get it or you don't, and you have to basically brute force guess it. So if if they happen to guess Hello World, they're going to get the answer, but if they don't guess it, they're never going to get it. There's no way to get closer to figure out if you're getting it, and that's a, you'll find that a lot with cryptography. Is It's sometimes frustrating as a developer because it, it either works or it doesn't, and you don't get any hints about if you're getting close, but that's, the, that's a good thing. That's the property we want of a hash function. So we've got uh, anything of any size can be fed into a hash function and it's going to spit out uh, uh, an exact 64 uh, hexadecimal character fingerprint of what that data is. It's deterministic. It's one directional. You, you can't go back the other way. You, it's really easy to make a hash. It's really hard to guess the, the secret of the hash. Uh, and, and what we could do with this is some really neat stuff about uh, even like, like a Merkle tree is what it's called. So that would be something more like... Ooh, let's see what we want to do here. Let's grab, well, I guess let's grab all of it and just copy and paste it a few times. Oh man, this is going to make a mess. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so, uh, wow. So we've got, oh, here, let me just zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we've got our three inputs, okay, and we could join those together and we could get, we can basically combine those. And we could we could combine all of those hashes, and then hash the combination. Oh, whoops! Come here now. Throw another hash in there. Okay. Ooh, 
Ooh, actually, I kind of want the color. The color is cool. Right, get out of here. Over here. Okay, so this color right here, that purple, represents the hash of all of these hashes. So if I change Hello World to Hello World 1, that purple is going to change. Any little change to any of these is going to cause my final hash to change. So I can bring in all sorts of data in all sorts of different ways, even have like a tree of hashes or, or a, a Merkle tree, as I think is what it's called, of all these hashes, or, or how about a bunch of blocks in a row, and this final hash is going to be based on all of these things. And if any little thing changes anywhere along the way, this final hash is going to change. And we'll need this property later on. But I think the key takeaway is to say, okay, well, I know that a hash function is basically like a fingerprint and if I type in something it's going to deterministically give me that thing that I expect it to give me okay awesome thank you that is a hash function welcome to eth.build uh, let's make some cool stuff and, and learn a lot along the way